Welcome to the Pastors Podcast bonus episodes. That's what we're calling these things. And uh, all of them are free, but it feels like I'm just throwing in. This is like... Extra free. Yeah, this is what Jim Gaffigan would call the uh, f- the bonus fry. The, the, the fry at the bottom of the bag you weren't expecting. So welcome to the bonus fry edition of Pastors Podcast. If you haven't listened to the rest of them, go check them out. Season four is officially out or rolling out. And uh, we actually are adding just a quick little 10-minute, just rapid fire, because we've got some amazing co-hosts with us this season, each one of them in their own right are pastoring, doing some incredible stuff. So I thought we'd sit down real quick and just ask you a few questions. Eric Johnson is with us. Um, Eric, great to have you with us, Thanks hanging out. Me. I'm yep. just gonna just just throw them out there. Are you ready? Here's I'm the questions. Uh, what do you love most about pastoring? How rapid fire are we talking here? Rapid fire. Rapid well, fire. I mean, we're. I mean, yeah. You don't um, have to like give me one word answers, but uh, okay. I was gonna say I love for us. We just planted, so I'm loving the creating a culture and the people that have really committed into it. And we're a year in, and now we're starting to really walk with people in their in their lives, not just the excitement and the hype, but actually like we're finding out, you know, the marriages that need help, the lives that are busted up, and I'm really enjoying seeing those people grow. I mean, that's just part of the pastoring and I seeing love it. people thrive and grow. It yeah. never gets old when someone grows. Opposite question: What do you love the least about pastoring, or maybe I'd even get what do you, what irritates you the most about pastoring? Politics is the new religion. Okay. That's my that's what irritates me the most. So when you're talking to people now, it's 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 largely through a political lens. Yes. So trying to pastor people and help yes. them reconcile, you know, become people that are reconcilers and healers and bridge builders instead of it's mostly about how do we divide and separate and trying to pastor and yes. lead people. That that's just irritating. Did you find that was different from Northern California to the South? Um, it's different, but it's not one greater than the other. It yeah. just looks and just sounds different. different. And so that's, that's, yeah, that's just irritating. Yeah. It's actually nauseating at some points. <laughs> yes. I'm going to give you a question that I, uh, that I, I'm going to break my own rule. I don't like generalizations. I don't yes. like when you say, uh, the church in America is this. And I'm like, how do you know what the church in America is? It's so diverse. It's so big. There's so many different congregations. Yeah. So I'm going to say something. Church around the world, we've got you know international uh, pastors and leaders listening. By the way, anybody listening international, we love you. Shout out to you. A lot. The number one thing that concerns you most with what you see in the church? Um, small thinking, narrow-mindedness, and one-dimensional. Um, I get concerned because of what my previous answer. It doesn't feel like people are getting more one-dimensional and thinking, more narrow and small thinking. And and I think um, that that concerns me the most because we, when we do that, we decrease who Jesus is, yes. and he in, according to our views, our worldviews, and genuinely that concerns me the most because we, it's so hard to get people to think bigger. Yeah. I'm not talking about you know the narrow path. That's a whole different animal. Just small thinking, narrow thinking, yes. and very flat. Yes, and it's like there's God is so multidimensional. Are you saying you're layers. Not, are you saying you're not going universalist on me? I'm definitely not going in that direction. <laughs> the number one thing that excites you the most about what you see in the church? Oh, then there's a community of people, there's a group of people that are really wanting to push the envelope of what church the hope of Jesus in this time in a postmodern context. There's people that are actually getting really creative in in church environment and outside of church environment of how to genuinely um, reach people and reach humanity. And I think that's really encouraging. And these are disruptors. These are people that are thinking differently. Um, and, and that's really fun. It's really fun to see that in the context of the previous answer. And so I think that's what's really exciting to me to see that. And, and honestly, some of, some of the ones that were maybe a little bit rigid and stuck are starting to yeah. move. And that, that's just encouraging yeah. to me. Um, if you were to take a moment and just brag on your church, what's the best thing your church is doing? Um, I mean, we're a year a year old, so um, I think existing. That, the best thing your church is doing is existing still. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. People are still coming. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it has to do with the word. Um, you know, when we were forming the language around studio and coming up with the values and and all that, trying to find articulation for it, we came up with the word called multidimensional community. And we were trying to find a way to address the multi-ethnic, the multicultural, and multi-generational. 
So our team sat down and we brainstormed and said, can we find an umbrella term that we can create a culture around? So when we say this, people know what we mean. And I would say, well, obviously, we're only a year in, um, but the relationships are longer than a year for a lot of the, a lot of our kind of our core. And so I feel like something that we're doing well is we're laying the foundation for a multi-dimensional community, and so multi-ethnic, multicultural, and multi-generational. Yeah. And and I'm very excited about that. Like even this month, this month had been around. We've done some things this month that have really moved that conversation That's forward. Awesome. So I feel like, um, I mean, again, we're a year in, so Still, people can, are coming, yeah, that's good, but I, that yeah. right there, the foundation, I'm like, and talking with other pastors and leaders who've been in the game, you know, planted churches years ago, and when they come and see or hear what we're doing, they're, they, they seem to get lit up about it. So yeah. I'm like, okay, I think that's something we're doing well it. right now. We're laying that foundation. Biggest leadership lesson you've learned in recent season, in, in past season? You know, I wrote this down because I knew you were going to ask this. And it's um, not bringing any self-imposed limitation into this season of leadership. Um, some great advice I got from a good friend of mine when we were transitioning from Bethel into Planting Studio is to not bring any self-imposed limitations into this season. And if you're not aware of them, if you're not, if you don't acknowledge them, you'll just reproduce the same thing that you existed before, and it doesn't need to exist. And so I think the, this has been going on for a good year and a half, two years of just recognizing just limitations and structures and systems, you know, um, that existed in the previous season. And they had to because of the environment yeah. and just the culture and just, it, it comes with the package. But because we went and started something new, we don't have to reproduce that. Yeah because it existed for a different reason. Yeah. So I think the biggest leadership lesson is taking a razor, if you will, to everything and asking the question, why? Yeah. Why are we doing this? Yep. What is this? Yep. And then what are my own internal limitations? What The things that held me back in the previous season, they're not here, but if, I'm not, if I don't acknowledge it or recognize it, then I just continue to live under the same... Yeah. And Love so I it. think that's a huge leadership lesson that continues to um, be existing right now for me. All right, bonus episode one on one with that Eric wasn't even Johnson. Ten minutes. That was like five minutes. Hey, listen, man, you just you, you, you sometimes when you're just such a great communicator, you just get straight to the point. Or the question askers really quick. Yeah. I or both. or both of us have to go use the bathroom. It's shallow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or both of us have to go use the bathroom, and so this is going to be a quick one. Yep. That's how it works. All right, guys, thanks for joining the Jesus Culture P uh, Pastors Podcast, part of the Jesus Culture Pastors Network. Yep, and we'll the, go to the bathroom. The whole thing. All right, guys, we'll do it again.